Second. This is the BAM Podcast with Malcolm Springer. Kyle, where are you from? You're from uh, you're from the you're from the river, two rivers, <laughs> the land of two rivers, <laughs> Eden, North Carolina. Eden, North super, Carolina, super super small city, really, really small. Really, so what's the, I mean, what's what you, population? You think? Um, well, I think it's fifteen thousand, and then well, the, small, the city that I lived in right after it was uh, seven hundred. You come from, um, is there bringing farmers up there? Or? No, it's, I think it was like, it was like mostly, uh, like people who worked in mills. Like, uh, the big job in Eden was Miller Brewing Company. And then when that shut down, that just, I mean, that, that destroyed the city because that was like the big job there was Miller Brewing. Miller Brewing. Yeah, they had like field field crest and Karastan and stuff like that, the like carpet and you know, right, industrial shit. What oh, man saying? I can I um. I mean, I'm not saying that um, I don't understand the uh, industrial thing, but I uh, mean, I come from a farming community, so it's hard for me to 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 under you know. Yeah, I worked in a plant. One of my last uh, jobs prior to doing this was in a plant making baby wipes on like a production line, like putting chemicals on them and then sending them out and then having them packaged. And Wow, you've come a long ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That job sucked. So uh, now we're going to have a description, you know, on the... Um... Uh, the YouTube channel about what what you are, but, but I was talking about he, Kyle is a, a a young producer that's uh, well, okay. I know you've been doing it a while, but now you're still young to me. But I'm an yeah. old man. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, you know, and I've I've bragged on you a ton on a, the, the recent podcast, and I've been saying, hey man, we gotta get Kyle in here. Um, I would say uh, the sound of um, Today's production is, I, I think you. I mean, that's my. I mean, I hear all these different names and everything. Um, and uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. There's some of them, man, that I'm not too impressed with. But you know, when I hear a, a mix or a production of yours, man, it blows me away. I'm like, God dang, that some bitch is fucking killing it. You know. So, so. Um, uh, well, oh, oh, I was gonna tell you. So, Kyle, here. So here's the deal. So yesterday, I'm I'm uh, talking to this band. This is this is a good one, man. Um, and they're, he, you know, this young man from Missouri, they're coming to, uh, do some tracks with me, uh, this next month. I don't know where we're going to track that. We might track at soundstage. You never know. We might track over here. Mm -hmm. Um, well, he's like, man, we're bringing our guitar amps, you know, he like that starts naming, you know, ripping these, these amps off. I've got an angle and we got a freaking diesel with all this. And I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, okay, fine. We'll do some real amps. You know how that is, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and I was like, well, you know, use a uh, Axfix, you, you know, too. And uh, well, man, we don't really do all that. And you know, it comes down to that. Then it comes down to uh, the drums. They want to track in a real studio always. And uh, so anyway, so I'm like, cool. But then we start talking about diamonds in St. Louis. Um, and uh, I mean, have you been to that club yet? No, I, I did. Uh, what's the one out? There? Fubar. But it's right and there. Then there's Firebird, St. Charles, Missouri. There's a big rock club called Diamonds, and um, we'll give them a big shout out. Um, and are you talking about a badass bar? I mean, this this place is like back in the '90s when we, you know, when when shit was like really popping. Mm -hmm. uh, this is that kind of bar. It's a uh, uh, the guy that owns it, man, um, Topher, he looks, he looks just like Ozzy Osbourne. It's, it's great. Um, I mean, there, there's an eyeliner. It looks just like, it's ridiculous. You pull up there. Me, me and Junior pull up in a limo. They came and got us in a limo at the hotel. We pull up there, man. He gets out. Amazing. And Junior's like, man, I thought that was Ozzy Osbourne, man. What the hell? That dude looks just <laughs> like him. Um, but, um, but anyway, uh, it's a killer place to play. So I'm talking to this band that's talking to me about all these amps and everything. 
And, and, I, and he said, man, I went to see Nita Strauss there. Well, I said, well, that's funny. I said, uh, my buddy Kyle, the guy who, you know, rents the place with me, uh, he he um, produced the record. He goes, oh, dude, cool. Okay, so listen, we went from, we're going to use just amps and no plugins and real drums to all of a sudden he's a Nita Strauss sound. Well, I'm like, well, well, if you like that record, that's a kid, that's a different kind of record. Oh, we have all kinds of influences. But anyway, so anyway, mm. so <laughs> yeah, there's the qualifier. <laughs> it's always there. <laughs> so so uh, how what? Because you had a number one with that. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about working with her and, and and how how it was. I mean, oh, she's awesome. She's a monster player. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, the, that record. Uh, there's not a lot to really even say about it beyond that it was just really fun because she's just a crazy player and she's a she's uh you know really sweet and you know open minded and fun to work with so it wasn't like a you know easy to write with and easy to uh get the ideas together so right not a well lot of struggle so and I'm, I'm I'm definitely not being uh any down in any year i'm gonna say you didn't have to write half the record huh no no <laughs> no she came in with a lot of material already really really yeah. well i talked to her quite a bit uh just in and out of your you know your session she seems like a very very fine young lady you know, yeah she she's like awesome a very very nice yeah. young lady uh did um now, now um what other number one did you have this you had another number one with with the oh yeah by the way let's, let's get back to nita for just one second i don't want to we'll pass that up what was the uh, name of the song and all that stuff that? that um, it was "Dead Inside" with uh, David Draymond from Dis from Disturb. Right, boy, that dude's got some pipes on oh, him. Oh, dude, he's the real deal. And uh, man, I bet. Uh, so, so, how was it working with him? Um, I didn't, I didn't work directly with him. He. Uh, so he did the vocals up. Uh, he remotely. flew into LA and tracked the vocals with Mike Plotnikoff. But I FaceTimed with him when we were talking about the mix and he was that's I mean, you know, everything you would hope for. You really? know, really, really uh a pleasure to work with. A lot of that remote record is going on now, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. it bugs the shit out of me. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's a there's a disconnect, but well, to some degree, um, you know, we did the same thing back in the back in the nineties, you know, early nineties. Um, I mean, we did. I mean, I me, mean, I was lucky enough to travel with uh, some of the bands, you know, that I worked with. But, but that's not always the case, you know. Mm -hmm. and you know how it is. It's like um, strings, stuff like that. Yeah, you, you know, go to one cities. studio yeah. to do that, and then yeah, especially with soundtrack stuff, it's like you know, and then. Your string arrangement that you have ends up being modified. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, you're you're pissed when you get the product back, but um, but you know, but um, man, how's old Hooky and them guys doing? I mean, how I want to talk about Hooky, man. He <laughs> called me the other day. Um, man, that's a band that really is under underrated. I think. Mm -hmm. I think so too. How um, have they got any octane action? Or well, they did, um, they've got, um, well, you know, his, uh, his whole social media presence has kind of taken off. Boy, so, so it? that's, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's been hustling on that TikTok grind. Not that I really, you know, know a ton about that, but, um, but yeah, the, uh, we we did a new song. Uh, I mean, I guess technically we have two new ones. One of them he texted me yesterday about trying to go ahead and get it wrapped up so we can release it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. They're 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 a great band, and they're they're called Dead Eyes, right? Yeah, and he's a crazy singer. So I, you know, I man, he is in he. Yes, I mean, absolutely, that kid is a badass. You know what, man? The thing about that dude is, is uh, he's a sweetheart of a guy. Mm -hmm. He really is, man. But you, you know, he's a musician. It's like, it's just kind of like, um, it's kind of like 
my old lady lived with me, um, and your old lady lived with you. Where you know we just are what we are, and uh, I don't know. I have my quirks, that's for damn sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we all do. We all do. I love him, though, man, because he called me. He, You know, out of the blue, too, um, I had saw something on Mud, it was Mother's Day, and I saw him and his mom and everything, you know, so I kind of, I'm, I actually miss old Hooky because, you know, you got, you got the, he almost reminded me of, um, oh, man, the dude. Oh, yeah, from <laughs> Big Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> the dude. So so uh, so, what are you working on now? Uh, oh man, I'm all over the place. Uh, so I just I just wrapped up Saul, which is fun. Spine Farm Band, uh, super super cool band. Uh, really heavy, but Anchor not rock. yeah yeah, but not you know what I mean. Not so heavy that it's uh, hard to digest. But I did that. Um, that I'm really, really excited about. And uh, I've got this band in right now called the Almas. They're kind of uh, a bit more throwback, but... Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. Why, that's why they That's why I've got a, a mountain of amps in my right. control room right now. Not something that I do very often. No, I don't hardly see that. No. <laughs> I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Do you? I mean, how do you feel about... I mean, of course, uh, you're a technolo technology... A master so um i've learned a lot about the plugins from you and and um you know i've graduated to a lot of different things because of you and uh you know some of these young engineers and stuff i mean hopefully a lot will be watching because i think they should um because uh that's when um scott marshall and we need to talk about that some bitch don't we mm -hmm. that dude is a class a some mm -hmm. bitch i love that dude um, me too he 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 helps Helps me. He's helped me along the way a lot. He's seen me at my worst. He's seen me at my best. Same. Yeah. I mean, you know, back, me too. In, back in the days. I mean, but uh, yeah. He says you never stop working, and I don't. <laughs> I love it though, so I'm not complaining. I love working too, man. But I have to say, man, that sometimes you just gotta take you gotta step away from out of the, out of, out of the batter's box, you know. But, yeah. you're, but you're knocking home runs and stuff. Man, how did you get your start? I want to know about that because I, I know you were in a band, but I forgot what the name of the band was. And I remember hearing it on the Octane and I went, that damn shit's going to take off so big. Well, it was like, it was long before that. I uh, I was in a hardcore band, metal band, hardcore band, what the, both, metalcore. That's what it's called. Um, And like... Uh, it was like 2004, 2005. And I, uh, we got signed. We, uh, we went and played a show in Texas and we got signed off of that show. And it was crazy because the opener for the show was in this moment. Who's gigantic now, you know? Right. And, uh, so we got signed off of that show and, we had to write a record and we were touring a lot. So I had to find a way to write songs. So I built like a little recording rig with no intention of it being anything other than me writing songs for this record. Right. And then I took the demos in when we did the record and, and the producer and the band's manager were all like, he did this and he's never recorded stuff before. He should record things. And I was like, whatever. You know, I was still working. Wow. I was working in a mill at the time making baby wipes. Oh my so, God. What a nightmare. So uh, <laughs> it went from like just me demoing songs to then like friends in the area coming up and being like, can you record my band? Because everybody was broke. And I, you know. Right. I didn't even plan on doing this for a living, so. Wow. So I just kind of uh, accidentally fell into it. That's crazy. So. I mean, I always cared about it. I always read about that stuff. Uh, you know, I would, that was the thing that I had the most fun reading about. Really? But I just never thought that I would do it. Yeah. So you read about guys like Bob Clear Mountain and people like that. Yeah. 
Wow. Well, fortunately, I got to work for the guy and um, and got to see. And it's funny, you just want some of those guys to rub off on you, you know. And it's funny, I didn't read much about Mr. Bob, but working with him was um, an honor. That's for sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, the short short time that I did, I, I learned a lot. And, I, you know, I learned more about gear than I did anything. Well, how did you, so the transition between analog and digital, what didn't really happen for you, it was just all digital from the get-go? Yeah, I guess so, because I just had like a, you know, the way that I did it was I uh, I just had like a, a shitty computer with like Fruity Loops on it. And I would go on like uh, Andy Sneap, who's one of my favorite producers, had a yeah. forum. And I'd go on that forum and people would upload drum samples and stuff. And I would just download them and put them into Fruity Loops and put them on a grid. And I mean, it sounded terrible, but it got the idea out. And then it, you know. Wow, so. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 hey, he had to come in because we were talking way too technical. But I, um, because this really. Yeah, we called him. Man. He brought his horse, too. Oh, hell yeah. Griffin, what's up, man? Hey, yeah. Brought the horse. <laughs> the horse is what's here. Up, what's up? What's up, buddy? Man, I, um, Ted James, we've been, dude, we, 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 get, we have been getting off way into freaking, um, uh, nerd land gear wise. Oh, that's cool with me. Should I put him in here with Jackson or is he cool to hang in here? He's cool to hang in here. Let me take, as long as he's cool. Off so he doesn't make Fucking horse. <laughs> well, hey, there's one thing. Hey, I can tell you what would be funny is to let the Chupacara. Oh, yeah. It's fuck no. Kyle Odell has a real Chupacara. And um, a real Chupacara. <laughs> so, Jameson, how are you, man? <laughs> a little tired. A little tired? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys. Yeah. You guys, 4 a.m. guys. Huh? Jameson wasn't up at 4 a.m. He was. Okay, Jameson was up at 4 a.m. <laughs> Larry, Larry Mazur is calling hey, me. He's going to have to wait. Mary Let, Laser. You tell that cocksucker I said what's up. I will. Um, Larry Mazur is a good man. I like him. What, what do you think about the new stands? Here? Where did Don't you get these? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, hey, listen, that's no sidetracking there. What do you think, man? What sidetrack? Oh, that's his nickname, that's Sidetrack. Oh, you too. can't keep a conversation with him because he, well, yeah, you can. He's actually pretty on point. He just, Wait, you named him Sidetrack? I but you Scott, can't keep Scott a conversation Wilson. with him? Scott, <laughs> <laughs> Scott Wilson. Okay. Save and Abel. Scott Wilson. Sidetrack. Save him. Sidetrack. So, uh, how are you doing, Jameson? I'm good. I'm good. Let's, uh, let's. Jameson. These are. Griffin. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, man. Yeah. Sidetrack, goddammit! <laughs> That's why he calls him Sidetrack. Hey, get him a regular mic stand. Man. That's cool. That's cool. You sure? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, you've got. I told you that. I told you, did I? I told you. I said I can't wait to see what Jameson's got to say about these fucking. Where did you get these? Uh, uh, guitar stands. Yeah, really. They're, they're yeah. podcast. They're podcast uh, microphone stands. Um, I know, guys. I know, guys. Um. It's just you can't see Kyle from over there. That's yeah. the problem. It's okay. No one needs to see me. Get, 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 get they can up. hear me. Hey, uh, so we haven't talked anything about Bigfoot and aliens at all. It's always been about gear, gearhead stuff. And um, we're not really, you know, Lidge, you know that one thing I was on, the one podcast. Have, man, have you been on there yet? Um, what? Elijah's um, podcast. Wood? <laughs> I was waiting. What is Elijah Wood? Oh, look what, out now. What is Elijah Wood? He was in uh, Lord of the Rings. Did you say who is oh, he? Oh, that is he? guy. No, the, the, the. I don't know where he is. Hey, hey, sidetrack. Can you figure out? It, it says Lidge on my in my email. Oh, Lidge. Well, his name is Elijah. Lidge is uh, you know the, you know what I'm talking about the. I uh, thought you said Lids. Same here. Like they do Good a God. podcast in the lid store. It's always about my redneck accent. It's always about that. In it. It can't, it's about my bald head or my redneck accent. I never said that. <laughs> well, Jason, I moved to strike everything past lids. 
Jameson, we sit here and uh, <laughs> talked about talked about Kyle's um, records he's been doing. How's it been going over there? Good, good, good. Yeah, you look tired, man. Yeah, man, I didn't sleep very good last night. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and then he woke up to a text from me calling him Pecker Lips. <laughs> so it's cool. About par for the course. <laughs> so you guys were in a band together. Unfortunately. <laughs> hey, Kyle. Fuck you. <laughs> True. So. Uh... Hey, bro, got a pick? <laughs> so. Yeah, we were. Yeah. And that's how all the whole recording thing got started mm-hmm. with you. Were you in the band when he, when you start recording? There's no, I had I. It was the band that I was in prior to that. Okay, I had already kind of like, I mean, but yeah, by the time we played together, I was, I mean, I wouldn't say professionally, but I was, I was recording. So, what was the name of the band? You, shit, God, this mic God keeps assaulting Jackson. me. <laughs> Uh, the the band was called Vanisher. Oh, okay. I thought it was like Dead Carcass. Of- Varnisher. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was one. I love Carcass. It's a so, great band. So, Death is cool, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> dead, dead Carcass. Um, so, Jameson, how are you doing, man? I'm good. The man that owns a seven-string, um, uh, are we allowed to say it on here, Everton yeah. Jackson? The Misha Mansour. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that if y'all don't mind. Sure. Okay. Uh, cause Jameson has, uh, educated me on a lot of crazy shit. Um, he's just the, the, the super tech head, um, as far as, you know, plugins and guitars and shit like that. So I hear they're making a bass. Everything. It's in development. Yeah. It's, I think it's been in development for a while, but I think, I it's, think it's always going to be in development. Man, I'm afraid it is too, guys. <laughs> Well, and, and what's what what the thing is though is like, like um, is, it, is it about to storm out? I don't. Well, you just, you just came, so I didn't know. It was it wasn't cloudy Ooh. when I pulled in. Okay, okay. Well, the re- <laughs> the reason why I was <laughs> that explains the smell. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like um, <laughs> explains the what. No, on radar. Oh, See, this hit. is this is a prime example of Jameson. You ask about the weather or some shit, and he just pulls out a weather radar. I'm gonna say it again. Man, we're not getting anything. They're from. here. They're here. Okay, so guys, I have to 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 to, to, to just I just want to talk about this ever too because I think uh, okay, <clears throat> I think that um, when I told Andy Dwight, he's from Greenwell, he's gonna come in and do a podcast pretty soon about. The Everton, mm-hmm. he was like, "Are you kidding me?" I'm like, "No." It's astonishing that it's still like you show it to people and they're like, "Whoa!" Yeah, they and think I'm it's like, snake this fucker's oil, been out for witchcraft a while. or whatever. It's ten years, yeah, it's been ten out years, a decade. yeah. Wait, ten years. But I mean, in full long develop- time. Ugh. I'm not even gonna go down that route. They were hole. so hard. They were really scarce at first. You actually, you actually had to like seek out the bridge and right. then have it installed yeah. on something. And eventually, they started doing the installs themselves. I, mean, I think the ESP was the first one that really adopted. I it think being so. On like the ESP, <clears throat> yeah. Because you got because it was yeah because it was a dying company I bet and I bet they went of this bump bu- bu- up the ante and I don't didn't. I don't think ESP has really ever had any sort of really? issues because I think my the, the, I think Metallica owns part of it. no they don't I I was hopeful of that but they Uh-oh. don't well see see uh, George Lynch always played at ESP didn't he yeah the the Mister Scary mm-hmm. and the, the yeah the Tiger Stripe one yeah he's the, got a bunch the what's the one with all the bombs on the mm-hmm. headstock or whatever. God, I used to love Donkey Man so much. Man. Yeah, Alone Again is God, what a track. Hey, I'm gonna tell you guys when I was like, I think I was 14, 15 years old. My band, we were we were in full swing at the time, and we got tickets to a Dawkin concert, and it was at this small place. Well, it wasn't like when I say small, it was like a almost like a gymnasium type of vibe, but it was smaller, you know, like a little theater. And I remember, man, we were about 10 rows back. And, man, here comes George Lynch just ripping that shit, man. I'm talking tearing it up, man. Now, I'm, man, 
of course, I'm young, so I'm looking at them like they are rock gods, you know. Mm-hmm. And here comes freaking Don Doc, Don Doc coming out on stage, a big old, and man, they were incredible. I love yeah. the show. I love Doc. I, I just, it was it was my first real big rock concert. Um, I did go to Bob Dylan when I was younger than that. I think maybe I was maybe I was, maybe I was a little older. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I remember just looking at those guys and going, wow. And Jeff Pilson was just spot on. I mean, man, what a, <coughs> what a great band. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What a great band. And I mean, but I thought he played ESP guitars. But there was another one he played. What was he's, it? he's been cited playing like PRSs and some others. Okay. Like, small. Of course, at the time, PRS was a much smaller company. Judging by the way his ESP looks, the headstock, because he has the banana headstock and some of those, I would guess Kramer's. Right. That's right. Okay, Kramer. Yeah. Do you know? Because that was a big '80s. Shredder. I had an original Kramer. I got rid of it. Mm. I think yeah. it's worth some money now, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because that was like a, you know how the the the, the neck was um, sanded. Do you remember raw that? maple? God, I love that feel of that guitar. I don't know why I ever got rid of it? Yeah, that's the way they. I'm sure it has something to do with yeah. some kind of bad woman. So, so while we're on the topic of raw neck guitars, let's just put out a put out a. Uh, uh, an APB. There was an orange Charvel oh. SoCal. <laughs> Hi, man. Sorry about that. There was, We've switched to ASMR. Uh, there was an orange, te- I guess technically called Pagan Gold, Charvel SoCal that was his first. Did you say Pagan Gold? <laughs> I wish I had. <laughs> uh it was his, and then it was mine, and then through some unfortunate series of events, it left our custody. And if anybody knows where to find that guitar, <laughs> we can verify whether it's ours or not, or the guitar. Custody. But, it, but if you... <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to have it back. So, yeah, heads if you up. See so, a pegging gold. <laughs> so, so, Charvel. So, we like it back Charvel in our custody. Yeah. So... So, so is this guitar a special guitar? Yes. Yeah, it's thick as fuck. It, everyone who has owned it in our friends groups uh-huh. have, regrets selling it because as soon as they sold it, they're like, damn it. The yeah, neck on it was phone incredible. Call, and when you answer, it just says, seven days. So, <laughs> so hmm. I, I want to talk. Okay, let's, let's switch gears here just a second. And right. I hate it because Jameson's here. And let me tell you something, some technical stuff. Uh, Jameson is going to have. I'm going to have to do a podcast with him because I think um, there is a lot of people who. Because I don't know about you, but me, he he showed me a lot about uh, the new plugins and stuff that's out and the new technology. And um, uh, I'm learning from Kyle this morning about how much he doesn't do the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Jameson sees. I don't do shit. Wow. Well, there you go, folks. Hey, all you got to do, the engineers don't do shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Afraid, I'm afraid that's not yeah. okay. Do, do, do you guys ever use the the the? the um, I'm just curious because uh, this is pot. Wow, Griffin, good shake, shake buddy. That shit, baby, shake it, shake it. Look, look at me, look at me like what? what are you about? <laughs> Sit down. Hey, hey, um, so, do you guys ever use um, the rooms on uh, on Spirit Drummer? I yeah. don't. I don't. I haven't used Superior Drummer as like my main. In a while, um, I use the rooms on whatever drum software I use. Yeah, but rooms are definitely. A I have to. What do you usually use them? What do you mean? What, what, what's your usual drum software? I was, I was just curious. Um, uh, lately, it's all the mix wave, mix wave, or get good drums. Mix wave. Mm-hmm. See, he ain't told me about all that. I did too. Did you? Okay. <laughs> Shit. Shit. Okay. We're we'll going to up ran here after the better podcast. Um. Uh, yeah, gonna, it's good. I'm gonna tell you what, what what I'm gonna tell you what it looks like, what it sounds like to me. Uh, I listen to some of these, you know, TJ out there in California. Um, he um, has these favorite producers or whatever, and me, of course, I'm Kyle O'Dell, Kyle O'Dell, Kyle O'Dell for this new sound that he loves, you know, because he's sending me stuff on uh, Wage War all the time and <laughs> bands like that. I'm like, man, that band don't sound that good. Listen to what this, and I'll send him back something you that you produce. And uh, yeah, I think he's good, man. But man, listen to this, and it's like some of the stuff, man. I'm like, eh. but anyway, 
Some of that stuff sounds like Lindrums. Did y'all did y'all realize that? It wouldn't surprise me if it's layered. It sounds like Lindrums and some cymbals are flown in. But anyway, anyway, here we go off in geek land again. But but it's like I think that um how did Lindrums become a new sound? I mean, it's just really like but it sounds like there's no room. Like these new guys, I forgot which one. We were talking about that the other day. He thinks this one guy's really good. And then um, now Scott Frazier said he really likes this guy's. I forgot what the guy's name is. He's doing a lot of big, big bands uh, right now, big rock bands. But anyway, it sounds like there's no. It's so clean, guys. I mean, it's super. Like there's no like room sounds. It sounds like it's just real, just snare kick. You know, if it's Tom, it's Tom. But I'm saying it doesn't yeah. sound like there's any room at all. That's why I was asking about the, the rooms. I think what room. Is, I think I think just the treatment's different. Yeah. You know, at this point, I think. I mean, I know, I know for like, I know that a lot of guys like to like, really blow their rooms out. You know, like compress them super hard and stuff. Like, I don't do that. I don't even process my rooms. I just turn them up. I like, I like compressing mine, but that's if I want to get more of a real drum sound. Yeah, I think I think I just I just do it for uh, for. I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just kind of hoping for the best, you know. I'm just I, I I really don't like like I I use no like technical terms when I work. I'm just like, well, I I, I guess that sounds cool. I love it. And then it's, you know, I get in the car and I listen and I'm like, oh, this is cool. I just try to, I, I just try to, does it sound good or not? You know, that's all I do. So what about, let's talk about Jameson here for a second because he's doing some. Uh, fuck yeah, man. No, 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 no he, yeah. he, he, he's doing some uh, producing um, on uh, Old Sailor and those guys. And how, I mean, how's that? I know, man, I mean, I love. Like if I was gonna if I, if I was gonna produce a metal band, this would be the engineer for sure that I would get or co-producer, um, because he's a he's a fucking expert at that fucking sound. I mean, you are. You, you, I mean, um, I mean, I would go to say, you know, Grib, you know what? Dad, hey, look, look here, Grib, you gotta have constant attention and love. Knock like, me out of the chair over that's here. That's like me. I gotta have constant attention and love. That's why I tell my old lady all the time. They would pat me on the ass, and I'm good. <laughs> but no um how's that going is it going good? sailor stuff's going good um it's it's um i'll send him something and he'll be like this is what i want to change then i'll change it it's just a revisionary process right. back and forth to, you know um communication being difficult this day and age when i'm here a lot and he's working a lot and coaching and you know he's a great guy really funny um uh, <laughs> You know, it's just, he is funny. What's, you know, we have basically pre preliminary tracks for every song on his new thing, but one, and it's just not done being tracked yet. That's all it is. Well, the guy is a, an amazing screamer. Yeah. Uh, is he singing on this new stuff? He's going to be doing some screaming and some like pushed. He's gotten better singing. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. But man, screaming, Kyle, this guy is fucking bad ass i mean and i've i've recorded some of the i mean i recorded fear factory man come on yeah um but man this guy can sing in say can scream in pitch like you know get out i mean he really can and that's i think something that it's hey, almost like a backwards sit down it's almost like he, he learned how to walk backwards before he learned how to walk forward you know what I mean? Because you it's a singer first, and then it's the freaking screamer that knows how to freaking do the pitch thing. But I mean, this guy just can. I mean, he he's got a lot of experience, and he's you know, you know, I know Sailor real well, and you know, he checks on me all the time because you know he's kind of he's kind of mad because I you know I went up in the hospital this weekend, and he keeps texting me. Well, man, I, I don't feel like shit, man. I don't feel like freaking you know, um, which I you know totally. Felt great yesterday, but back to the same old limping around shit today. But that's another story. But but uh, but yeah, I was just wondering because I mean, um, I think that he could do pretty good. To be honest with you, yeah. And I think he' going to do better with you than me because I just felt like, man, I just felt like you know, you know, trying to 
um, arrange something like that. You know, one thing, you know, you never, I'm telling you guys, if you ever stop learning, you, you really are dead in the water. Yeah. You know? And I learn from you guys a lot, man. I appreciate both of y'all. I have learned a whole lot, man. Um, because I learned a lot from uh, what you know, you know, one of my buddies over in Memphis, man, one of my drug buddies that you know taught me a lot about stuff. You know, you know, we don't really hang out much anymore, but um, well, I hang out at all. We talk on the phone, but that's about it. But uh, but it'd be it's amazing how much you can learn from those rap guys about stuff, low end and stuff like that, because you just kind of go, really, that's what you're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, because you know, and I try to try to learn, but, but man, you know, sometimes, man. Um, like this last session of mine with Josie Scott, you know, I never really mapped out those songs of his, you know, his old hits, you know. And uh, and I remember coming into you, Kyle, and I went, hey, man, so how many times do you do like a pre-course that's eight bars and then a chorus that's eight bars? And uh, musically, it, I look at it and I just kind of turn my head like this and go, well, how the hell is that going to work? What's well, two choruses back to back? Yeah. And um, and, I, and I'm going to tell the secret of Josie Scott right here, okay? He, um, I'm not going to tell the whole story because it might it might upset some people, but but I'll, I'll put it to this way: He talked to one of the Beach Boys, you know, and uh, he asked, he said, "Just give me one thing, just give me one see one, give me the secret. How did you do it?" And um, and the guy told him, said five hooks, five hooks. He goes five hooks. Five hooks a song. He likes to fish. Five hooks. Yeah. But I mean, real. But but I mean, I'm not talking just. I vocal. get it. You make every part of the song have one. Do 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 you um do do you do you go by anything like that, Kyle? Do you do do you do when when you arrange? Do you look at that? Uh yeah yeah I mean I uh um yeah I mean I have some rules. I guess that's what we can call, we okay. can call them rules. It's it's not like a, a thing I live and die by, but they're they're uh, we'll say goals. Goals is a little less okay. uh, uh, confining than rules, but yeah, I mean, I don't I don't like choruses that don't say the 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 phrase the only title. once. I'm the same way. What about you, Jameson? What are you What are you when you look at a song arrangement? <clears throat> I mean. Things have changed so much, though, and that's mm -hmm. that's because uh, it's funny. Because Lucci, I, you know, I'm producing a band for you know the, the other LA. I don't hear the chorus. I don't hear the chorus. I don't hear the chorus. But man, a chorus to kids today is a lot different than a chorus to us back in you know 2000. I'm just saying, it's uh, it is a different world, and it, it's like uh, so, so. So do you do you look at songs like that? Um. As long as um, mm. I can like tell that everything is related, I don't really care. So if I know that the, the intro is is being followed by whatever, the next part has to let me know that I'm still in the same country as as the intro, but I don't necessarily have to be in the same state. Yeah, there's I, the there's the lens. Yeah. yeah. I want to be in the same movie the whole way through the entire song. I don't want it to be like a black and white, you know, horror movie at the beginning of the song. And then well, end wait a like, minute. This, this could, this, that, uh, I don't, I don't know that because one of the greatest movies of all time does that, which is the wizard of Oz. What is this movie? The, the, the wizard of Oz. <laughs> it starts out black and white. <coughs> I don't want the movie started as a black and white horror movie and then end up in like space in like 4000 AD. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I want them to be one okay. like movie. I want it to. Mm. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. See, I like. Sustained. I like music that reminds me of uh, Guy Ritchie movies. Uh, sometimes it's total confusion until you get to 
the answer, you know, like you have no idea why this guy's stealing these diamonds and he's going to go to the the, the, the casino and gamble all the money away and how this relates to anything. Right, but see, the, the mystery of those movies that you're describing is contiguous all the way through until you get to the answer. Right. So right. even though it might be chopped up and make absolutely no sense, right. <laughs> that mystery still shrouds the movie up right. until the it does. It it, does. there's a big reveal. And that's kind of what I'm... But I'm listening. Shut up. I'm just saying, <laughs> and I hate to talk about it, but I have to look at history. And uh, speaking again of Josie Scott, because digging into his old stuff, uh, I found out that none of the sections are in the same key. Uh, none of the sections... Uh, but they are at the same tempo. I gotta say that. And then you have you have an eight bar section, and then you have another eight bar section, uh, and then you have a a, 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 a a verse that's an eight bar section, uh, intro that's an eight bar section. I mean eight 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 eight. And it really, to me, I get bored with sections. Um, uh, goes back. I don't know. I come from the Peter Collins book of arrangement. I have to say, um, and that's not. Hey, let's start with this. This is the basics. You know what I mean? But now things are changing, guys. I mean, things are changing. Kids are getting bored with that. Mm -hmm. with that. And um, I, I don't feel that, though, when I hear the Nita Strauss record. I don't feel that that same old thing going through the song. I right. feel like it changes when, 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 when my heart feels like it should. Whereas when I listen to Kanye West, when I'm mixing his stuff, I'm like... Where in the hell am I at in this fucking song? I mean, mixing Kanye's like uh, when I mix that stuff for him, I, I, I well, seriously though, but it's almost like it's to this point where you're like, do this, and he'll change it, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh man, and I think that's that's kind of where rock and roll is going. I think that the arrangement. Well, I think weird is the name of the game right now. Yeah, who can I be think, more? I think, I think, and I and I think. I don't think it's weird. I mean, I think that you can say weird and it comes off a little, uh, like it's derogatory. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah, not yeah. what you it's mean. It's not like that. I mean, it's like exciting. Like there's a part in the new falling in reverse song that, that, that it just kind of like goes completely I've heard it, yeah. out of nowhere to another place. But I think it's like the coolest part of the song. Me too. Me too. So, I don't know. I mean, I think I think there's a lot of left turns in music now, and I think that that's exciting. But I do think that at the end of the day, the song has to be good regardless right. of those weird turns. Well, I'm gonna say one more thing about song arrangement because really we're sitting here just philosophy, you know, being philosophical, you know, philosophical, philosophical. I would we're like to have that for lunch. We're philosophizing music. <laughs> 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 now look, so. I just don't, what I'm missing is, is, um, I never mentions the word addiction in certain company. Okay, there you go. First time I heard that one line, I went, that's a hit song. That's what I'm missing. You miss, you miss knowing immediately. I miss hearing that first line of the song and knowing this is going to be a hit no matter what. Yeah. Now it's if I hear, and especially what you guys do, uh, when I hear the groove and the riff, then I go, "This is going to be a hit song." It's really yeah, weird yeah. to me. The it's really riff. odd to me. You know, don't y'all think the riff, the riff, the big yeah. riff in the, the groove, riff. the riff. But you know what? That's funny because guitars are such a back seat now. But the riff, the riff matters. The riff matters, and it's so hilarious to me because there's this, there's this. I know it sounds weird coming from a redneck, but there's this fucking instant I want to shake my fucking ass, mm -hmm. or I don't, and it's just that to me is like the new. Um, they never mentions the word addiction, you know, or, or the first time you heard Pearl Jam. Um, I'm a lot, but what's the first line of that song? It, it doesn't matter. But when I heard the first line of um, "Oh, I am alive," I remember hearing the first line of that song going, "Okay, here's a hit." The mm -hmm. very first time I heard it, I went because I was told, you know, I'm that guy. If everybody loves a band, I hate a band type of thing. Right. Um, I, I loved Radiohead until everybody started telling me to make their shit sound like Radiohead, and I went, "I fucking hate Radiohead." 
Um, and I went, oh, yeah, that's right. They ripped off the band Bread, totally. Um, it's, the band, it's the Bread ripoff band that has a bunch of fucking funny squeaks and squeals and stuff like that. But anyway, I digress. So, anyway, so, here you go. Mm-hmm. Last night. No, oh, fuck. Let's go. I, I know, here we I go. I got my seatbelt on. Have you seen the new Skinwalker Ranch? I haven't actually been following it. Um, I watched the first couple episodes um, and then went straight to sleep. So but that was like forever ago. Guys, man, I got to say, uh, on national TV or whatever, they're getting somewhere finally, you know. Um, in, in what regard? Like aliens or cryptids or. Okay, so here's the thing they're shining a. a uh, Fuck it. This was an episode before last. They're shining a beam of a, you know one of them laser pointers up in this one sp- part part in the sky, and the thing is changing. You can it's you can bending. See it's bending. Okay, it so it's bending. So they get these high power telescopes to to be on to see the stars past this point. And the the equipment, the, the stars that they when they point, they do the alignment on the you know how they do they align the telescope. Uh, the stars behind it disappear, so it's being obscured. So it is a portal, a hole of some kind, um, or some kind of uh, where you can go from dimension to dimension. Now here's what's crazy. It's not the only part on the farm that's like that, and that's where the ranch is like that. It's um, it's so interesting. And last night, so because they've been shooting rockets, you know, rockets, you know, up, you know, up into this thing. But what's scary is when you shoot a rocket up in the sky and it never comes back down. Now look, man, I got some, you know. Now listen, maybe this is all show business. I don't know, but I know that the military. I've done a lot of reading on that thing, and um, uh, and every time they shoot rockets up to the dang thing. Uh, here comes a UFO, a UAP, or whatever you want to call them. Um, God, I wish you guys had seen it because it's just so interesting to me. It's just like I'm sitting there going, and this is why they got the cameras rolling. Uh, you know, I mean, hey, maybe I'm a dumbass and maybe this is all just a show, but I'm pretty sure that it's it's it's, it's not. It's a real thing. Um, I don't know about. Skinwalker Ranch, but I do know there's been a lot of stuff that's going on in Congress lately about the UAPs that have been, right. and they're literally disclosing them. Like, so what is what is that what is that for UA, UAP? I'm, uh, I'm not it's the new privy. UFO term. I guess. They, yeah, I forget what the actual st- it's something aerial phenomenon. Yes. Okay. I was I, I was on the aerial, but I wasn't sure. Well, okay. Well, I think that what they done have done, Kyle, is I think the UFO. Um, it's kind of like um, talking about. Um, it's almost like saying a bad word. Yeah, the, mm. yeah. The, they want to disambiguate it from its topic. Right. Exactly. What the deal is? I know that I've seen um, because anything could qualify as a UFO as long as it's unidentified. Exactly. Correct. And they want to separate the two. Correct. And, but the, the the military when when they have. A vehicle that's going, um, I don't know, something like, I think the number was like 360 miles an hour um, above the water, and then it goes in the water, and then it comes out of the water, and it doesn't lose um, momentum. momentum at all, and it seems like it is intelligently being guided. Um, it must be eating Mentos. <laughs> Mentos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, you remember those commercials? They oh, were so yeah. good, and this is the new one. But yeah, I think I think I no no. I mean, that's like uh, the one that Freever saw was was hovering over the ocean, right? And then in a split second, disappeared and reappeared eighty miles away. Yeah. So, what is uh, what's your guys? What I mean, what's your take on this thing? You think they're from another? Hey, do you think this is time travelers? It's coming back and 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 uh, and uh, visiting us, but they're not. They can't contact us because well, they can't give up their shit. You know, if they are time travelers, I mean, they can't let us know that. Right. I think it would be extremely bold of us to assume that we're alone. Me too. Yes, I, it would not just bold; it'd be arrogant. 
God, to assume a... that we're the only thing that exists in this vast, you know? Yeah. That's what. I mean, what that's what's incredible to me. It's like you get these people who are so closed-minded and small-minded because um, somebody told me the other day that the Bible says that we are on a flat earth. No, it doesn't, man. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. Well, if that's the case, then we should sacrifice bulls to the God, you know, to God this afternoon in the back cemetery. I mean, look, man, that's not what it says. Um, it doesn't it doesn't say that. Never know. I mean, God may want us to sacrifice bulls, but I'm going to have a bull to sacrifice. And, you know, now I do have a second engineer in there that one might, I may, may qualify for a sacrifice. But <laughs> blink, blink twice if you need help. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, 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 he blinked a lot. So the the, the the for someone to say shit for someone to say that the flat Earth thing, it just I mean, I have friends that are really intelligent guys that think the Earth is flat, man. I mean, it would be the only example of a disc in what the surrounding galaxy, <laughs> and. That is a massive. Yeah, thing. it would be it'd be an anomaly. I mean, it'd just be like the the outlier of er- it, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the existence of tides by themselves itself is plot right. twist. We're all actually two D. Well, so so guys, look. <laughs> plot twist. So look, I didn't say it for once. So so guys, so here's so so here's the so here's the. Uh, I love it because this is our regular studio mm-hmm. chatter here. So there's a plane and it's flying, and they're saying if it is not flat, that the plane would have to be going down as it goes around the Earth. I mean, that, I that, love, that, I love, that I love, assumes that I the, love Earth, the facial expressions that, on this man. That I assumes love. that the plane is way bigger. <laughs> Then the Earth is round. Okay, in a lot of ways. so <laughs> so let's just let's just do this, okay? This table is the, is the Earth, okay? Right, right, right. If a plane is having to go down to go around it, if it was flat, it well, no. yeah, <laughs> yeah, but 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 if the but the thing that it is is like they're saying so they're saying so so as you were saying like oh, shit. obviously if the earth was flat the plane goes up and it flies forward and then it goes down but they're saying that if it was round that the plane would just have to constantly be like this but the the problem with that is is, is you're not considering the size of the planet so of course the plane's going to go up and it's going to drive it's going to drive the plane is going to drive <laughs> on these giant tall wheels. I'm going to start my own new conspiracy. The planes don't actually fly. They just have giant wheels. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? Like, like, right. No, it wouldn't constantly be going down. Do you know how big the fucking planet is? Right. There's going to be some flat surf. Like, I, it makes my, it makes. I'm going to start drooling if we continue talking about it because it makes my brain melt. Okay, so you have a circle, okay? You have the center point, okay? What? Plane lifts off, and we pretend the air, this, this circle is spinning now, okay? So what? the plane is just staying still. But It's traveling this direction. It's planet spinning underneath it. When it goes to land, it drops. What? Okay. <laughs> if it's flat, okay, plane goes up, Goes down and nosedives straight into the ground. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. So, 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 so here's the deal. So, let's talk about what we talked about the other day about how the tide works because the tide doesn't go in and out. Right. That that's like not a real thing. The, the Earth tide, spins in the, the water. Earth spins inside of this water, and we go into it and out of it, and we keep spinning. But, so, so if we're this, you know, fucking, you know, galactic discman. You know, uh, <laughs> just, just, you know, <laughs> we're a yeah, yeah, yeah. God's got his headphones on. He's got us on his belt. And the sun is the yeah. laser. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, and we're spinning. There's no tide to go in and out of. 
Like, none of the things that we actually can visually look at happening would make any fucking sense. Right. <laughs> like, like us spinning, none of that would make right. any sense. I mean, gravity we would be itself. On a fucking, like, uh, eco carousel. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think I've seen some of the arguments is like the disc is moving upwards, which is what provides us gravity. But if that was the case, we would have shed our atmosphere billions of years ago. Can, oh, Lord. Well, this is what I... Look, what? Nothing. Hey, I'm <laughs> That's telling just a you, big number to count to. Take off I, your shoes. I talked to the same guy I was talking to about the plugins. Or, you know, I talked to him about this the other day again because I love getting him worked up, you know. He's like, man, the the Earth is flat, man. Just face it, man. The Earth is flat. I'm not saying it's completely flat. I'm saying it's dome shaped. I'm like, hell yeah. Okay, so but at some point, oh yeah. And did you guys know that when you go to the Arctic Circle, I'm not, I'm not, not Arctic Circle, Antarctica, mm -hmm. that the those mountains up there, that over that is where the end is. Oh, that's the edge. And that's where the demons. Where does Bono stuff. live? That's where the demons. But does that imply that that Antarctica, for instance, circles the entire planet? Exactly. The hillside does. Yeah, the hills do. So yeah. that's what that was in South Park. Oh. Those weren't like the mountain ranges or <laughs> anything like that. That was Antarctica. <laughs> Is that what you see in Utah, like in Salt Lake City, the the mountains that go around? The... I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm I don't sorry. get it. Yeah, I'm trying to. Wrap my head around how do the Ferdinand Magellan, how did he get around? Well, he didn't complete the mission, did he? He died before he got around the earth. Shit. <laughs> so he was did the he, one, he was the first one to circle the Cape of Good Hope, correct? Right, but he didn't live the whole way. There was another the, the guy that took his place, Captain Whatever his name is. Spaulding. <laughs> 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 Aren't we fucking funny? Yeah, no, but, I just, but, no, but but I'm saying though, guys, it's like I'm just trying to. I, I don't know, like I don't know how to help these people that think the Earth is flat. I don't know how to help them. Uh, you don't. It, it's, it's to a point now where you just they don't want help. They yeah. just they just want to be contra contrarian or whatever they want to argue. Let them. Well. This is what I heard. I heard that there was two guys that got into an argument. One guy, and I'm not going to say any names. I don't know the exact people. I can look it up. Um, said that he could sell anything to the human race. And the guy bet him a dollar. These are billionaire guys. So he came up with this whole flat earth thing. And he won. I'm serious. He he got he convinced so much of the population that the Earth was flat, and I'm not joking. This was what really happened, and convinced like, man, I don't, I do not want to insult anyone that I love because there are people that I truly love that believe this, and that's what's hard. Making fun of their thing is is kind of shitty for me to do, but man, it's hard not to, man, because it's just. You know, hey, you know, I know that we have a thing on the front of the podcast that says the views of, 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 of you know, uh, is, is not the views of, of, of 10 inch uh, music, but and Malcolm Springer. But hey, man, this is the views. I mean, it's just ridiculous to think the earth is fucking flat. And what's even more ridiculous is to think that we're alone in the universe. But I don't think that, I don't think that, that the, there's an alien race out there that's going, hey, man, let's go to Earth Saturday night, man, party, dude. Right. But you never Odd know. Odd world. <laughs> you never know. They might yeah. be flying around getting drunk going, hey, let's, yeah. let's, let's see how you so much is react here. You know, um, I don't think that's the case. Um, maybe it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a real hard um, time wrapping my head around, though. The only thing is um, I say I say I'm from another planet because of some of the crazy shit that humans do. I go, are you fucking serious? Listen, man. I mean, there's some things I probably shouldn't say, but I'll say this much. Um some of the political leaders that we've chosen over the past years, uh, you know, um, I mean, not that I didn't like them. It's just, it's just, didn't we have a better choice? I mean, there's just no better choice than this. I mean, 
You know, and, 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 and that's the thing. I'm not Republican, Democrat, or anything. I'll be honest with you, I give a shit about it. You know, there was a time that uh, in uh, 99, I turned to my engineer, Charlie Brocco, and I said, rest in peace, Charlie. Uh, I said, Charlie, who's president of the United States? I swear to God. That's how far the music business was from yeah. political stuff. But but I just have to ask, what the fuck is the world are y'all thinking? Because, you know, it, it is kind of amazing to me. But for somebody not to believe that there's... there's um, there, there's not extraterrestrials, but do you do you think they're here? Do you think, James, do you think they live here? Because uh, we were talking about Big, Big, Bigelow on 60 Minutes said, they're not only here, they live among us, and they are here, and they've been here way before we we, we, we were here. So my thoughts on the whole thing are, is is right after Roswell in 47, was it 47? Um <laughs> We had, ju- we had just Sorry. come out of the World War. We just come out of World War II. Um, Germany was licking its wounds because we had basically just disassembled the entire country. Um, there was uh, during any war. There's always technological advancements because everybody that can and will gets basically conscripted by the government to be put into research labs. Yada yada yada. Um, you didn't really see a lot of technological jump in the area in the middle of World War II. But coming out of 48, there was this gig- There's a graph somewhere, I saw it online, where you see like 1948 just jump in, after Roswell. in advancements right after Roswell. And I'm not saying that that is like, you know, empirical proof that we've been reverse engineering stuff, but we've. It took us longer to go from copper swords to steel swords than it did for us to go from steel swords to the atomic bomb. I know. And that's what's and scary. It's scary. With the way expo- uh, you know, exponential curves work, you know, I, f- I feel like something sparked that initial jump. And even if it was um, divine you know, intervention, whatever you want to call it, the uh, people go, well, man, people back in, back in, uh, you know, uh, the day were just as smart as we are now. Then you look at like Baalbeck, you know, and you look at Baalbeck and you go, hang on here. Now these stones, guys, they're like twice as long as this building. You know, they, they're quarried, you know, and, and they move these things over a million pounds. And, and you go, now hang on, somebody somewhere lost something. You know, you look at uh, Quebecly Tempe, I think that's how you say Quebecly Tempe. Okay, so if, if you if you look at that, you go, because I, I, I saw a thing on that just yesterday, because I've been kind of, kind of been having, kind of been laid up in broken bed for a minute because I've been hurting, but it's like, I watch the thing on it those stones are fucking huge and they're cut precisely for that particular thing like and it was purposely buried i don't i don't get it i don't understand but see the purposely buried thing bothers me that bothers me because why would they purposely bury it um and who are these people and what's even more crazy did y'all did y'all hear about um i know i said this in the last podcast but i'm super excited about it Turkey finally is going to let them excavate the Noah's Ark. And um, everybody goes, oh, Noah's Ark, bullshit. Well, happens to be they, they did the ground penetrating radar thing. And there's exactly, it's okay, the thing is exa- exactly the length of the Ark. It says in the Bible, exactly. Uh, and it's four levels, just like it says in the Bible. And they did the ground, and there's four levels of this thing. So it is the, the you know, you know the Noah's Ark. And it that, that that place is that Quebecly Tempe is what only a freaking what 60 50 miles from there. See, I'm unfamiliar with the arc thing. Um, but well, Mount Airfax, I think it's less than that, maybe 30 miles from Quebecly Tempe. And there's over, um, I don't know, 100,000 bodies that's buried in this area that that they can tell by ground penetrating. There's, it was a graveyard. People came from all over the world to bury their dead there. Um, 
And the arc is, to me, uh, can you pull that up, Big Daddy? Why is it Look, Do you eye. call him Big Daddy? <laughs> yeah, Big Daddy. <laughs> Big Daddy <laughs> Sidetrack. Big Daddy Sidetrack. Hey, man. That's Hell good. yeah. You know, he's, I got a new he, name he, for Jackson. He's a hip-hop. You know, he's a hip-hop guy. That's a good. That's I good like name. that. Big Daddy Sidetrack, man. Big Dick Daddy sidetrack. If if, uh, if you're if you're super into the Gobekli Tepe thing, um, are you familiar with Graham Hancock? I am, man. It's one of my goals for the podcast is to have him. Um, Ra- him and Randall Carlson would probably be. Oh man, they're, they're awesome. I mean, I know that they've done a bunch together, but I still think that it would be worth a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a very they're, they're both very interesting individuals randall carlson himself See, can talk just hours i don't know anything about any of this shit. are you serious randall yeah. carlson yeah um, man have you did you see the last joe rogan podcast uh no but i've read the books and I, i've seen the the podcasts with him and by himself and i've seen the ones with him and randall together but i don't know if i've seen what you're he man look Kyle, this is something that you would very, it would really interest you. I mean, it would it? it would, I mean, it would really yeah, interest you because it's like how North America, like some of these, uh, like uh, stones, these huge, massive boulders um, and rocks got placed where they're at. It, it is a, it is a fucking, it, I mean, it is a, a confusing. I mean, anyway, you've read the book, so let me see. So, so, so basically, um, there was a bunch of maps that were found that are like old. Um, and they show the coastline of Antarctica before it had the ice cap. Yes. Right. And that implies that someone mapped it before seagoing technologies were developed. Right. Okay. So from that, he started thinking, well, what about, what if there was like a lost civilization? And one of the most unexplored areas on the planet is the Amazon basin. And I think we've only explored like what? 10% of it. But it's like that. It's like half the size of the United States that we're like, we've never explored this, but we're done. So, so he's saying, let's explore it. Right. But the thing is though, is if you use, if you use LIDAR, you know, ground penetrating radar, radar or whatever, you can see all these like perfect 90 degree angles and like cities in the rainforest that have just been completely overgrown, uh, you know, and it wouldn't take long for that to happen in a rainforest. Right. Um, there's there's a, 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 a tale, I forget what the actual, who the name, what the names of these people are, but they, they said that when they were going through the Amazon, the first time they kept running into all these just massive golden cities with like white stone walls and whatever else. And then a hundred years later, they sent another expeditionary crew through the same route and they didn't see anything. But I mean, well, it wouldn't take anything well, to, de- to delete a society and then have the rainforest just completely eat through and cover up that city. So, and there's, there's like lots of evidence of this, being the case but we just have never explored it well that's what bothers me though is our in our entire theory of um of when civilization really started um is complete bullshit um and that is just a fact now i mean there was another place they just found uh forgot where what it's called but i think it's in north america and uh, they go oh uh oh we, 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 okay, we fucked up here because this is even older than Quebec and Tempe. Um, and that just happened this past couple months uh, here. I forgot where it was. I'll find out more about that or, or part two. But, but uh, man, here's here's the Randall Carlson thing that really scary, Kyle. So the Ice Ages. Okay, right. so all, uh, I'll show you. Um, Antarctica... The center of Antarctica was at one time where Washington, D.C. is right now, um, as far as the North and South Pole goes. Now, how that changed, how fast it changed, um, I guess, is the scary part because they're finding out that, that 
that some of the uh, remember that um, um, uh, what was that movie where the flash freezing you know the, flash the day after tomorrow but yeah. where the center uh, absolute zero wherever the they know I was right they know now that that shit is real um, they're finding these these uh, uh, what what are the big elephants um, mammoths mammoths that that that, that are froze they got food in their mouth they're sitting there eating and then they just freeze i i uh just to interject momentarily i have been sitting over here with my bladder tied to the bed again uh telling it it better not piss and i'm going to have to uh have to piss real fast in a second but uh, all right well let's take a break for a second cool there's Boom. another one pop snap pop here we go i right, um so That's here's here's my question here we get back on aliens for a second. Terrible. Then, then we're going to talk. Then we're going to talk monitors here in a second. We're going to talk some more tech. Oh fuck yeah, tech man! Talk. I love monitors. <laughs> um, do y'all think that uh, they live here? You you know what? I don't think that I'm qualified to answer that, but I do fucking hope so. Um, I've been to, to New York, so I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Okay, I'm, I, you know, I'm trying to. I, I'm, I'm, I'm joking entirely, yes. but I, I do think that, you know, there has to be something here. So, um, I know you guys aren't big uh, uh, Bible scholars like I am because I think that's the only book we have, whether you believe or not in God or whatever. Um, it's the only book of instructions, you know, we have really to go by. It's been handed down for generations and generations and generations of stories. Um, <clears throat> the reason why that it's made it this far. Um, and, uh, and also Krishna, which I bring up quite a bit, that guy, um, because pretty much the same basic, um, uh, love or forgiveness or whatever is taught, you know, in stories. But man, there's some stuff that the Christian thing brings up that's a lot more hairier than uh, even the Bible or the what we call it the um, the Gnostics, you know, the books, the book of Gnostics. What, what, what we call them? It's not Gnostics. Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Um, uh, the Enoch and all that stuff like that. Um, the Watchers. There was 200 Watchers uh, that was left here to watch over us and all that stuff. But now. <clears throat> Christian thing was way before all that, right? So that was like thousands of years before they even started to write the Bible. So it still had. <laughs> Sorry, Griffin was over there talking, <laughs> mouthing some shit at me. I had to check him, and then the mic checked him. <laughs> but anyway, um, do you guys know anything about that? Because there was a big thing about the giants, because China actually, no, Japan. The baseball team? Japan actually found that they, but they disclosed the giant bones uh, they found in this huge well. Ah, which Interesting. More, okay. Uh, but anyway. I don't know uh, anything about this, but I'm down to. It just, j what, just happened. Tell anyway, me about it. Uh, well, you know, Lincoln, President Lincoln said that the uh, he wanted to visit the land of the giants before he died. And that's where I'm from. I'm from the land of the giants, which is southeast Missouri and southern Illinois, um, uh, east, uh, east uh, western Tennessee, because mm -hmm. those Indian mounds that they found, um, that, that's there right now, um, which I, my family actually mowed one down. Uh, yeah. Um, a, a giant? Those were built by the giants, not the Indians, is what they're saying. Uh, because they're finding the big giant bones, you know. In the, in the I mean, I'm talking about some, I'm talking about some fuckers that are ten foot tall. And have y'all heard about the Rock Lake thing? That brings me. To that. Have y'all heard about that? Remember we I talked about that one day, didn't we, Jameson? Shit. Rock Lake sounds familiar. Um, There's pyramids in the bottom of Rock Lake, Wisconsin, which is close. To yes, Madison. yes. You showed me that. Man, let's go. Man, let's go dive that. Man, I'd I, love to. I, I want to go dive it. You know, just just get the diving gear on, man. Go down there and just see these fuckers. In fucking Wisconsin? At That's the bottom of a lake. Pyramids. Pyramids. Like, real pyramids. They're, they're, them in they're enormous. They're, they're enormous. enormous. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I believe that. And I'm, like, fascinated by it. But fucking Wisconsin? Of all places? 
That shows you how much we don't know about the history oh, of uh, shit. That's, that's I'm you. down though. Well, I know one thing. I don't, I'm not really. Can sure. you dive it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, you can. And there's a lot of people that do it every year. Um, I say a lot of people, people that are like me, that are you know basically, mm-hmm. man, guys. Let's just face it. We're nerds that have tattoos and long hair. Well, I have no hair, but I'm saying your well, spirit has long hair. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. He's, I'm including you, bud. He, he's I, finally waking up. I love it because that's yeah. that's the cow. That's the yeah. cow that's finally awake. Because um, he always has something to say about something about something. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, the, the the pyramids in the bottom of Rock Lake to me is so interesting because like, who the hell was here to build pyramids? I mean, depending on how old they are, you know. I mean, yeah. Rock, Rock Lake is a natural lake, so. We, do we know when that when they were filled though? Uh, see, and are, I think are, are, are they, Carlson said something about that. That guy, man, the stuff that he describes is just scary. It is because what's scary is is it could happen today. And he, I think that they're mainly going on comet or or impact theory impact yeah. theories. Well, yeah, I mean, I watched a thing uh, two days ago about like the what the progression of Earth is going to be pending that no nothing crazy that we didn't expect happens. That I mean, we're doomed for an asteroid. There is an asteroid impact that's going to happen in like a billion years that they're like, there's no avoiding it. Right. And there's like, <clears throat> and they they talked about if if things hadn't already killed everything on the planet, that will be the. The one of the greatest, um, I guess, solaces for me though is the fact that we are such a capitalistic, inter- enterprising, um, I guess, species as a human. Because if we can find resources, we're going to try to figure out a way to exploit that. And one of the things that that Randall Carlson and Graham Han- Hancock talk about is harvesting asteroids you know what's ironic about that though is like it, uh, the majority of of like alien sci-fi movies are about aliens coming here and doing that to us oh yeah and we well, would be those aliens doing that to someone 100%, 100%. else hundred percent hundred percent and and at that point if they did come here and do it one fuck yeah <laughs> two <laughs> I, you couldn't blame them right but, man, me, me, I got all kinds of crazy theories. I, I mean, um, but I guess the main thing for me is, is what the fuck is in our DNA to make us want to find gold? What's so, I mean, I, I know that it does a lot more than some other, you know, um, some other the elements, um, natural elements, but uh, what possesses us to feel that God, the God, the gold, is what we what we measure our currency by. What we measure. I mean, it just has to a be man's a worth. Of what it looks of, like, you know. What I mean? It was it, it was also beautiful. very easy to work. Yes, it was very right. it's malleable. Um, so you could cut it down in smaller pieces and distribute it. You could hammer coins out of it really easily. Right, but so can silver. Silver is a lot more rare than gold. Well, in certain areas of the world, when currency was being developed, what, um, silver there, wasn't as prevalent. Isn't there like that one mountain that's basically the entire silver, not the entire, but most of the majority of the silver comes from this one mountain in um, down there where where Hitler ran off to after the after Argentina. The war. Yeah, yeah. That's a there's like a mountain there. And the guy that. They couldn't. Uh, the guy that really got credited for the whole thing of how to separate the iron ore from the, the the silver, I forgot his name, but he was the one that really made the money, man. Mm. Uh, because uh, you know, I just want to say something about the, this uh, whole world one currency thing. I have to bring that up now that we're on that uh, uh, gold and all that stuff. Okay, so to all you guys out there that uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but. Uh, you know, they go, oh, it's all one world currency, man. It's a sign of times. Okay, now hang on here in a timeout. You know the pieces of eight? You know how long that currency? It was like for 250 years, piece of eight was the currency of the world. 
So it's not a sign of times, man. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it is. I'm just saying, um, uh, I don't know if you guys have uh, Bitcoin or anything like that. Um, I know the market's down pretty low. Um, but so is gas. Gas is high as hell. Yeah, it's fucked. But uh, anyway, I could go on about that. But, you know, I think it's just getting us to do electric cars and buy electric cars. I think the whole thing is is the price and buy more electric cars for sure. For sure. But Well, you know, the problem with that is I, we talked about this recently, which is like, you know, gas prices go up. And obviously, when gas prices get really crazy like they are now, people buy electric cars. But naturally, like, it's cheap because electricity is infinite. You know, that the energy is, you know what I mean? But, as you said, we live in a capitalist society. It's like, well, if everyone buys an electric car, they're going to raise the prices of the charging stations. So it's like, either way... We're screwed. You're gonna get. You're gonna get that. You know that that's going to happen. Well, so, yeah. I mean, like you, you'll have to have. It's not gonna be instantaneous. No, but it's gonna climb. Right. They'll. They'll be. At some point, there's gonna be quite a um, service of installing high current, high voltage charging ports for anybody who has. Yes. A you know like a you see at car. airports and right and yes. Um, and it'll just be like a service. It'll be just like internet, water, whatever else. But the thing is, is that at that point, when you connect anything to it, they're going to know what you plugged in, what the mileage is on it. They're going to charge you for your mileage. They're going to charge right. you for anything else. And, you know, it was, it was, you know, in, I think 20, 2009, maybe I got in a really knock down drag out argument about why Facebook was free and everyone was like well why is it well, you know why is it free I'm like because they're selling your information and they're like bullshit and I'm like they, they are they, they are, are doing, they it. doing it and then you know fast forward eight years or so and everybody starts getting you know privy on the fact that hey they are doing that they are doing that they are doing that and, and but my here's here's my question since elon musk is uh since he is coming out with the he's putting that satellite in the air that's going to cast the uh, internet everywhere yeah that means we won't have to pay for internet here anymore wow how's he making money off of that he i don't know exactly how that works i know that he's been launching satellites um did you did you, did you know that was happening kyle what's that called now What's it called? I'm so disconnected. I don't fucking know anything. Um, hey, hey Sidetrack, can you look that up <clears throat> and see what that is? Oh, yeah. I know that he just opened it up for Ukraine. Uh, so Aquaman. You... <laughs> <laughs> what? Aquaman. What the hell? There is a, uh, a lovely exchange. Starlink. Starlink. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, I have heard of that. Uh, they He just opened it up for Ukraine to use for their like emergency services and for their military so they can stay connected uh, with each other. Uh, but he, he's quoting Aquaman. <laughs> There's a lovely exchange between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, and she's just talking shit, and he just... Out of nowhere just goes... Aquaman. So I've been saying that nonstop. <laughs> it's great. It's great. <laughs> whatever, so whenever something's God. going on that I know nothing about, I just go, Aquaman. <laughs> uh, wow. Hey, yeah. Well, well, well that's fascinating. That <laughs> I, I, I do know what Starlink is. I just don't know anything about it. I'm not educated on it. He, he wants... Um, information to be as freely available as possible he wants I mean, every, that's, that's, everyone that's on earth yeah. everyone on earth if you're a kid in uh in africa in the middle of the freaking desert you can still get internet which would pose to me a huge uh safety uh thing for people who get lost and people who Right, you know, I mean, that would be a huge leap for mankind. I mean, yeah. it really would be. I'm, I'm trying to understand a lot of the things that are going on right now. 
uh, I don't understand. Like, I uh, saw this thing. Okay, here's our whole back from Mars is that we could be traveling there and the sun let off a gamma ray or not, you know, just does a just solar one, flare. Just one, just solar flare. And then everybody in the vehicle gets cancer. Um, well, uh, I, I don't think they're going to get away from that. I think what they're going to get away, what they're going to have to do is find a way to get rid of the cancer. So uh, I, I would go the other direction because uh, radiation <clears throat> is going to go through pretty much anything. Uh, the only thing that uh, they said would, well, I know this sounds crazy, but this is the truth. Uh, human uh, species are shit. Uh, lining the walls of the thing would uh, protect people in there. Isn't that fascinating? Have y'all heard that too? I have not heard that. That the, that that's uh, what would stop the radiation is human shit. Uh, lining the walls of the, uh, you know, or in the walls of the actual space capsule, um, and uh, that's a very disturbing. Very I mean, disturbing. that might stop the radiation, but that is not going to stop me from throwing up until I die. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I'm fucked either way. Well, I'm saying I don't think that it's supposed to be like smelling or whatever. I think it's supposed to be contained. But I'm saying they're saying that that is what would be the ultimate shield from the radiation. And I'm like, wow, of all things. I don't know that that would be the ultimate shield. I think that that would be like the ultimate, like last ditch effort. Organic. Well, they said shield. that's what uh, would would stop vegan stop shield. Radi- I'm serious, like would stay, stop the radiation. But man, my thing is, is are they going to like find people that have been eating corned beef or steak, <laughs> or are they going to find vegans? Very good point. Uh, who is going to eat what to make that motherfucker solid? <laughs> A lot of Metamucil. Yeah. A lot of fiber, a lot of mushrooms. Hey, yeah. you're not qualified to get on it, man. You didn't eat corned beef enough, man. I'm going to tell you right now, man. Grass-fed, free-range <laughs> humans. Yeah. I like it. Hey, man. Well, anyway, I, I have no I don't know. I know nothing about that either. I'm just not educated on this shit. Man, we got to get him more into freaking like all the... the, the, the uh... I mean, you want... I, I read about shit and I research shit and we talk about stuff, but it's never about like this kind of stuff. Like, I, I'm I, I'm fascinated by animals. Did, did, hey, did you, did you ever find... Let's go back to this Noah Ark thing. Did you ever find that uh, on there? Blow that shit up. Noah's Ark was, in fact, a Honda. A Honda. A two-door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it had four doors on it, so it was a hey, sedan. So, so oh. It, 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 it doesn't give an... You can't... Hey, sidetrack. You know what they call a chicken coop with four doors on it? Chicken sedan. <laughs> You're welcome. Can yeah, you yeah. do an aerial picture? Can you type in, in Google... Of uh, air, of uh, satellite picture of the uh, that what they think is Noah's the site arc. for the ark. Yes. The w- site. Would it be aerial or would it be lidar? There you go. There you go. Right here, guys. Okay. Side tracks getting somewhere here. And this is in Turkey. Yes. Man, that place is wild. Watch this shit. Look at that, guys. That's it. What the hell? Elon Musk pops it's up. listening to us. Put that on the big They're screen. They're here. This what is going to be a thing. I'm going to say that throughout the whole podcast. Pop-up blocker. But it's the exact same dimensions as the art. And the thing about it is it's petrified wood is all it is. Petrification. What an interesting no, thing. Here. See, look, it shows the levels. It's a great term, too. It's a good word. Petrification. What scared it? But the fact that. (laughs) (laughs) Good Lord. (laughs) Jeez. Oh, man. Force field. (laughs) So so this shows the different levels of stuff. And, you know, when we when we show the podcast, we can go to that. So look at this, because it's like. That's just so interesting to me. That's as old as it gets. There's nothing older. 
That well, not necessarily because you well, know, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, because if you know the Great Flood before the if, Great Flood, there right. were cities, there were civilizations, supposedly. Well, that's um, well, that's what the Bible says. But now, what, dude? dude this could all happen. Again. This this could have already happened. That's that's yeah. my thing. Uh, because once <laughs> there is an ice age again, and there will be, because once we get to that point in the galaxy, you know how we, you know. It's funny, I try to bring that up with Lucci on the podcast, but the, the podcast didn't make it. I love my Lucci, but God dang. But no, uh, so the Earth is going around the sun, right? Um, the, the moon's going around the Earth, and we and the sun is going around the galaxy, which in the middle of the galaxy is a black hole, right? So I have very a lot of questions about that, but... So when we get to a certain part of the galaxy, and you probably know about this, Jameson, that that's when we have the Ice Age, and that's the thing. So so many, because they can tell by geological uh, records that there is an absolute, um, you know, pretty much solid freaking time that we're going to have it, and it's coming up. Um, but now... Could the thing be caused by an asteroid hitting? Yeah, uh, I was about to say a natural disaster could cause it too. Right? Yes, um, but the, if there was an ice age, and because right now we're sitting uh, here in Berry Hill, at one time there was two miles of ice, you know, thick above us. Right? Uh, not here. Um, starting about really? the Great Lakes up, there was a two-mile ice sheet that covered basically it everything. Just erased. It's like a big eraser. Yeah, um, and then you, the theories are that, you know, the, there's multiple theories. One theory is that they melted over a course of like a thousand years. Um, but so, so there are some... Um, Randall thinks it happened really quick. Randall thinks it happened over the course of two weeks. And there oh, are... That's a lot of melting. Oh, yeah. But the way, the way oh. he describes the amount of water rushing from the ice caps down... Yes. Is mind boggling. But it did run over this part of the country. The ice didn't. No, but, 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 the water, but water, water but, but the water did. did. Yeah. Um, and if you look at the scablands uh, around like Seattle and stuff, you can see all these little droppings oh, of of sedentary or uh, sediment, whatever. Um, and um, I you think I think the I call plane? them free radicals. Basically, what a free radical is, is just a gigantic fucking rock that was suspended in these ice sheets. That when it finally melted, it like shot these things across, you know, our our landscape and just right. deposited them in in just random areas across certain places. And that's the only explanation for why they're there. Um, so, because there's a place in um, in Kansas that these huge boulders are all stacked up in this big mound and nobody knows how they got there. They're like, we don't know how they got there. Well, that's how they got so there. Was that. It was, you know, somehow right. that. Or at least that for now is the most logical explanation. For <laughs> yes, sort of. Right. I mean, there but, are, there's still a lot of kickback on Randall's theories. Right. And because, you know, it's, it's, Technically, you know, science is, has been an old boys club for a very long time. You know, if you, if if you don't have a way to substantiate what's being said, hey, sidetrack. Uh, the, the camera went out. Already. Is it out? But but basically, we if, have another one. if it's if it's you know if it's um if it's against what you don't live here, man. Hush. Really, Griffin? It probably scared him. Okay, okay hang on. I'm sorry. So, so you know what? Let's swing off of it. I want you to finish what you were talking about. Though. Basically, um, the way that that we understand how the ice sheet melted is is being contested, and the 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 information that's being brought forward and the evidence that Randall's presenting is very convincing. That's all I wanted. To, that, that's basically yeah, right. it. It is very convincing because if you listen to the guy. Um, how I mean, he is a mainstream archaeologist, though, an archaeo geologist. He's a geologist, yeah. Okay, geologist. God, do you guys remember having to take that shit in college and going, God, what am I doing this I for? I never went to college. And now that's like they're rock stars. No yeah. pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. 
Fuck yeah, dude. That's a great one. Hell yeah, that's a great one. <laughs> no pun intended. I like yeah. it. Fucking rock star, dude. No. I like that. What, um, let's swing back over to Audio Land. And you know what, man? Good conversation about uh, crazy stuff that people don't talk about very often. And I think that people are interested in. And I think that people need to start. I think that the more we exercise our brains on where we came from, I think the better. Because people, there's those people that are Gnostic that are going, I don't give a fuck. And that's not me, man. I'm wondering about where we came from because I, I know that, man, I'll say this. Guys, we wasn't picking each other's ass about 300,000 years ago. Um, the humans, they come up with, and I say that because that's why I think I'm from another planet. They come up with uh, this these two theories. Okay, and, you know, of course, Jameson's had to hear this, you know, a million times. But they do, though. Okay, so we either, we either appear in the garden or we evolved from apes. Okay, guys, now, if you really think about how fucking ridiculous that is, it's both of them ridiculous. It's 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 ridiculous. Do I think, do I think that God, the spirit world, can 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 form in a you know physical form? Of course, I, but I don't figure that we were even um, we were. I don't think we were made here on Earth because if we, if if we were, why the hell would we, would we need um, suntan lotion and sunglasses? There's a. I know what you're going for here. You know, what I'm you know, like. I, I, the, there's speculation that, that our spines weren't, um, what's the word, developed in our atmosphere, in, in our gravitational right. pull. Exactly. Which is why, you know, we have, you know, back pains that just run rampant through the hum human race. Right. Um, I think that we were planted here. I do too. I think that Prometheus, the, the beginning of the Prometheus, is a very good example of, of how intelligent life was brought to yes. Earth. And however you want to picture God, uh, however you want to picture our Creator, I try to stay away from the word God because there's many gods, I feel. And, you know, you call money a God, whatever. But the creator is what I'm talking about. The real creator, um, alien, whatever you want to call him, but not human, whatever. Are we a science experiment? Yeah, is Earth a Petri dish? I mean, I've been through Was TikTok, and I feel like there's quite a few things that are experiments. <laughs> and, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to say wrong. this. Failed experiments. Yeah, yeah, wrong. I, I totally agree. It's not wrong. But but now here is uh, the question: Are we is it, <laughs> the reincarnation thing? Is Kyle O'Dell reincarnated from a, some engineer in Abbey Road in England years ago that passed away? Uh, I would probably say at some point, you know, because there's naturals. Uh, there's like you know my my whole piano thing is a prime example of. Of um, something when I was real young that I experienced, I went, I hang on here. Man, I'm not the greatest in the world. I'm not. I've never worked at it. I've never tried. I've never learned. I never practiced. Matter of fact, I don't remember practicing piano one day in my life. The only days I ever practiced piano was when I sit down to look at Isaac Hayes, sit down at that piano that's over there in A right now, and go, Mr. Isaac, so what, how do you, how do you, how do you, theorize this how do you put together in your head and it was so simple you know it's like it just like man it's like when you play guitar you know you got a d over g you got an e over a you know you got all these different combinations but oh shit, man what am i thinking of course and uh, i was already doing somewhat that but i just took all playing uh, you know uh so just like your engineering skills just like your guitar playing skills which is off the, both of you are off the fucking ledger i mean um uh, exceptional. So we're talking players. about innate ability versus. But I'm saying though, you're no. Not everyone can be a Kyle O'Dell. Not everyone can be a Jameson. Thank goodness. Not everyone can do the things that you two guys. I look at us all like X Men. You know, we we all have these powers. Uh, where where do they come from? And that's the creator, whoever created us, uh, gave us those powers. 
But were they developed in another lifetime? You know, that's the that's the billion dollar question. I, you know, I'm gonna like tie some some stuff in together, and it might really kind of annoy a bunch of people. But science says that you can't create or destroy energy; it can only be transferred in one form or another. And which is how your atoms, right, are billions of years old. Exactly. So, like, we are create we are we exist. Uh, out of atoms that are billions of years old, okay? So what our body is made of, that material is billions of years old. We may only be 36 years old, right? but the stuff that creates us is billions of years, is old. Billions of years old. Yeah. So if we take that same properties of, of energy, it can only be transferred. When someone dies... Something has to go somewhere in the form of the energy of life. And I feel like with that energy, when it leaves, there's a signature that's been imprinted in that energy. So wherever it lands, it's going to have that influence on whatever it attaches to next. Whether it be another human, whether it be a tree, whether it be this microphone. I could be talking to, you know, whoever right now. Because the atoms that make up this microphone are just as old as I am. Well, they're from some dying star that exploded millions of years ago. Right. Got pulsars. It. Speaking of pulsars, you said dying star, pulsars. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to pivot. <laughs> He's going to pivot to monitors. <laughs> let's go just ahead. like that, he let's, pivoted to monitors. Let's go ahead. Just like that. And, and just like that, we're talking about studio monitors. Um, sorry, those he, sorry. are they called they pulsars? Sound, yes. This sounds so good. They are pulsars. They're they're, they're 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 ex ex machina is the company. What now? Ex machina is the okay. company. Okay, well listen, tell those poor folks when you talk to them that I said they need to change the name to something more simple. How about <laughs> XM? There you go. That makes X serious. I'm I'm serious. Like no one's gonna remember that name. Are you fucking yeah. serious? Yeah. And so, the, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. They're they're ex machina pulsar, right? Monitors. Yeah. Ex machina. Yeah. Yeah. It's Latin for the machine. Yeah, like the movie, like the movie Ex Machina. It's no connection to that, but right. You know, <laughs> obviously, there's a movie called Ex Machina. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Really? But, yeah, it's about it's about AI technology and it. You know, ex machina. What 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 nation is this thing made in? It's here. Yeah, man. It's in Brooklyn. But now he, here's here's my thing. These guys must be this. These monitors must be fucking badass because anyone anybody that's that big of a nerd to call their freaking studio monitors ex machina has got to be smart sons of bitches. Well, it will, it is a crazy technology which yeah. Jameson knows more about than I do and I happened upon by accident because I was doing this Saul record and I was tired of what I was working on. I didn't like it. I I I mean I liked it but I wasn't hearing things the way that I wanted to. And I was like, I want to buy. I mean, it's a loaded statement to say forever. It might be, but I wanted to buy a crazy set of monitors. And I was going down the list of the usuals, mm. you know. I, I believe you were going through the list because yeah. you tried how many sets? I tried a bunch of you... monitors, but we, you know, we did, we did. And, and, and to preface before I say this, all of them did sound great, but we tried barefoots and PMCs and uh, uh, we uh, ATC, Genelec, uh, uh, Fo Dyn Audio, Focal, Focal. Dyn Audio. Um, I mean, we went through everything. And I found this company by accident. I couldn't find any reviews about it, which usually, you know, is like a bad sign. But I found one review that was so glowing that I was like, okay. So I contacted the owner and I told him, I was like, I'm a rock producer in Nashville. And I, I was like, I'd like to hear these, but I have no way to hear them. And he was like, uh, he said that there was another, he listed three other rock and metal producers. And it just so happened, I, I've known one of them for well over a decade. So I texted that guy and I was like, how do you like these monitors? And, and he, he immediately was like, they changed my life. 
So he connected me with the owner through him, and the owner was like, I'll send you a pair. And two days later, they got here. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, they got and they're pretty big. Yeah, yeah, they're huge. And we hooked them up, and I pressed play, and I remember both of us just being like, oh, wow. I got to come and hear these things. I they have the biggest sweet spot of any monitors I have ever heard yeah, you stand in my in life. Room and, and, they sound awesome. and they stand vertically, which normally gives you a much smaller sweet spot in the room. Yeah. But basically the whole room is a sweet spot now. It's yeah, my, unreal. My room is not like that. I'm, 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 I feel so insecure now because I use NS10s and, um, and, uh, I guess I should, should should branch out a little bit. I do have some uh, monitors that that, uh, that Scott Wilson bought me. I haven't been able to use them because I I'm switched because of the Aurora. I wanted to get more something that wasn't clouding my, you know, because right. because well, I shouldn't say anything bad or negative about any company. I will just say this: I had something that 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 made it cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get but it. Now I'm using it for my headphone box. <laughs> well, because I, I figure I need to buy a little console for in here, but whatever. Um, wow, ex machina. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're crazy. You know, you don't need a sub. They they. Uh, Are you having to do ads for them? No, I mean I don't. I don't have to, but I I want to because they've. I so I did a I did a mix on them the first. Like, you know how monitors are. You have to learn them. Right. Oh, I didn't, I know. I didn't have to learn them. I, the first mix I did on them was probably the best mix I've ever done. Wow. And that was an immediate, like... You're selling me on them. Well, well I, I heard them, and I was like... We were both like, this is it. But I was like, I need to make sure. So I need to try a bunch of shit. So, so you know, I did... The PMC-62s were the closest that I got. But it's still nothing that I used compared. I just did the Saul record. I had four revisions on the entire record. Wow. Four. And it was only on one song or two songs. Something like that. It was it was nothing. Wow. And I they weren't and, the and they weren't even really mixed revisions. They were take out this bit of production here. Yeah. And it, you know they it weren't was like remove this impact sound. Okay. So I mean, how often do you, do you, I mean, and, and I mean, just in general, like how often do you do a mix and send it to a mix of 13 or 14 songs, however many it was, how often do you do 14 songs and then the band sends back and they go only one song has revisions? Wow. The first mix that you send. I mean, that never happens. You know, I mean, no, I mean, there's sometimes it depends on the kind of band I'm producing. Yeah. Um, Because. It's all, um, to me, music is just so like, but what, what you're doing, your kind of stuff that you'd produce is really vivid, but everything else is kind of up in the air. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, you, you know, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? It's like the stuff I do, cause I do some wacky stuff. Y'all know that I do some wacky stuff and, and not wacky, but just pop more pop or more raw Oh yeah, I love this. I, I love this particular um, this comment, man. You need to put some sandpaper on it. Okay. What grit? That's what I want to know. Yeah, there's a lot of different. Oh, that's right. You want me to make it sound bad? Like uh, I'm not gonna name any records. I can't do that on here. Just but dirty. I, but I will say this. Yeah, you know, something that doesn't sound so clean. Yeah. Oh, that's when you're doing those modern rock records and hanging out, you know, hanging out with Jameson and fucking Kyle. And I was actually told that by somebody and fucking pissed me off pretty fucking bad. Even though I love you guys, I'm just saying that was exactly the comment. Yeah, you've been hanging out with Jameson and Kyle too much. You know, you, you need to make that fucking thing sound raw. Well, look, man, I'm all about not using a condom. Uh, but now, <laughs> provable <like>, through <laughs> visual it's like raw yeah. is like what are you talking about, son? I mean, what are you really talking about? I just think that a lot of those statements are really loaded because you know your definition of raw will be entirely different from exactly. my definition of raw. It's so ambiguous. It's, you know, it's it's just weird. It's just yeah. a, a weird. It's just weird. It, it doesn't make any sense, you know. And uh, but you know. 
the thing about it is, is give me a live room. That's where I shine uh, on a console because that's where I grew up. Yeah. And if you want a raw record, you got to pay for a raw room. I mean, you know, if you want that sound, you're going to have. It's kind of amazing that doing like a raw record can cost you way more. Way right. more, way more than doing something clean. Right, but I in twenty twenty two, remember please. yesterday, guys? And we'll say we, we got we got cut off here pretty soon. But remember yesterday, that kid I sent those mixes to, and uh, he's not a kid, young man, I should say. Um, not gonna say what band, but I will say this: so he did pick out the drums that yeah. were real. Yeah, that's right. And I'm gonna tell you, it blew me away because I'm gonna be honest with you: I would have picked the other. Yeah, because you know, but that's but I but I'm the one who did it. So anyway. Man, thank you guys for coming. I yeah, of course. Appreciate it. And, and, and look, um, we need to we we need to have a, a, um, definitely another one one of these days. Um, I'm hoping this thing takes off because I I I love doing them. Um, but no, there's some things you know um, that uh, that we should talk about again, and you know the audio side of it. Man, I'm hoping that maybe I can do two or three of these a week pretty soon. We get to get yeah. on it and everything. And that way, because there's a lot of engineers and producers out there that want to hear about you two guys. And Kyle, you become pretty pretty famous in the ranks. I'm proud of you, man. And I brag, I brag on you all the time. All these people talk about these other producers. I'm like, if you want a fucking real fucking modern rock sound, that's the, that's the guy that can give it to you. So anyway, proud of both you guys, man. Thanks. The man... Great podcast. We talked yeah. about everything. We covered everything. Audio, aliens, big, well, we didn't, no Bigfoot this time, next time. But I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to somehow get a video of Bigfoot, put it on YouTube, and we're going to make millions. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. <laughs> I'll see right. you guys. Yeah. <laughs>